What's going on guys and welcome to season one episode seven of my grow tent series. In the last episode I took you guys to kiss school and we learned the basics of compost tea and I got to really explain to you the benefits and why compost tea is really amazing for the garden. In the last video, I got the chance to show you guys how I water my fig cuttings. And if you guys didn't get enough about watering, no worries. We're gonna be talking about watering pretty much every episode moving forward. In this episode, I am gonna show you guys how to make FPE or otherwise fermented plant extract. If compost tea is like lighter fluid for my grow tent, FPE, fermented plant extract, is like gasoline. And in this video, I'm gonna show you guys how to make FPE. If this is your first time joining us, I'm Homer from Basement Figs, Elgin Noise, Zone 5B, and let's grow some plants. As you guys can see, that compost tea is really doing a number on my grow tent. My plants are raging, they're growing really fast. It's actually making me nervous. I'm against the clock now. I really need to up pot these plants before they get root bound. And that's the last thing we want to do right now is to stunt their growth. All right, guys. So now that we got the grow tent tour out of the way, let me go ahead and say this. There were several things that made me very successful in my first year of growing fig plants. One of them was being composty and another is FPE or fermented plant extract. I really needed to go ahead and explain compost tea and the benefits and how to make it to really understand FPE. So if we're talking about compost tea here and we're using bacteria from existing compost and go ahead and add oxygen to help multiply that bacteria, FPE actually uses anaerobic bacteria. So meaning no oxygen. So this anaerobic bacteria isn't just found in compost. What we actually really need to do here is source it. All right, guys, so here is our two sources of anaerobic bacteria. It's otherwise known as labs, which means lactose, acid, bacteria, serum. So here we have the KNF line, and then we have the EM1. Both serve the same purpose. This is gonna add the bacteria. You can go ahead and make your own labs Labs is generally just made out of fermented rice water and milk. What you can actually do is if you're close to a farm, you can actually use the byproduct called Waze and that actually has lots of labs in it. But what I did was I went ahead and just purchased these two products. We only need one of them, but I wanted to give you guys two examples of labs. All right guys, let me go ahead and take you guys to KISS School and learn all about FPE. So to make FPE, we really need four things. We need water, we need our labs, we need plant material, and we need molasses. So what labs actually does is it'll actually eat the cell walls of the plant material, pretty much releasing all of that chlorophyll, all of the really the meat of the plant material into the water source. So again, once we go ahead and water our plants with this fermented plant extract, all of that goodness is in that water source and it's gonna hit our roots a lot quicker, making the plants take up the nutrients a lot faster. The reason we need the molasses is again, just like compost tea, we need a sugar source for this bacteria to multiply. It's that easy. What's really great about FPE is just like compost tea, you can go ahead and add a whole bunch of different additives to go ahead and produce the results you're looking for. With FPE, what you're trying to do is source plant material for the goal that you're trying to get. So if you're focusing more on plant growth, you might want to go ahead and pick a plant material that has more nitrogen in it. A great source of that is alfalfa, a grass, dandelion leaves. If you're really focusing on fruiting, what you can go ahead and do is put some flowers into your fermented plant extract. If you're looking for more roots, go ahead and use rooted vegetables. You can go ahead and use a whole bunch of different things when you make your fermented plant extract, and that's what's really special about it. FPE really has two amazing benefits. I already mentioned earlier about the nutritious value, how these anaerobic bacteria attack the cell wall of the plant material, really releasing all the goodness into the water. 
Some people might actually think that's what FPE is all about, but the primary reason for FPE is to multiply this anaerobic bacteria. So the benefit of compost tea bacteria, again, is building that symbiotic relationship between the plant and the roots and the bacteria. These bacteria, again, in compost tea, help the plant uptake nutrients a lot quicker. In FPE, in fermented plant extract, the bacteria that we're trying to multiply is the anaerobic bacteria. Why do we want this anaerobic bacteria in our garden? Well, this is a bacteria that actually breaks down your soil media. If you're using living soil like I am, which is really high in nutrients, this anaerobic bacteria actually helps break down the living soil a lot quicker. And when we water our plants, the nutrients in our living soil break down a lot faster, giving our plants access to it a lot quicker. All right, guys, so what's really cool about FPE is you can really use a whole bunch of different ingredients to produce the FPE you're looking for. What I'm deciding to do in this batch is use beets. Beets are one of the superfoods of the world. Those organic guys, what they really believe is if it's good for us, it's good for our plants. Beets are loaded in a whole bunch of beneficial nutrition. It has lots of vitamins, vitamin A and vitamin B. They also have tons of micronutrients, the calcium, the magnesium. The main reason that I am using beets is it's really high in potassium, so it's gonna be really great for rooting and fruiting. It's loaded in carbohydrates. And when we talk about carbohydrates and we break it down into sugars, we're looking for a really healthy sugar source. And my theory is, is if I can go ahead and ferment this, get this into the root system of my fig plants, when my figs are ready to produce some figs, my figs will go ahead and taste a lot sweeter. We're actually gonna use the whole thing. We're gonna use the actual beets, and then we're also gonna use the beet greens. Beet greens are also loaded with a whole bunch of nutrients. We're just gonna go ahead and chop this up and get this in our ferment. So now it's time to go ahead and make our ferment. The first thing we wanna do is get a pillowcase and then some rocks. What we wanna do is weigh this bag down in our container and this is just going to help keep it submerged so we'll go ahead and place some rocks in this bag just like so and then what i'll do here is i'll go ahead and cut up this beet and again we're going to go ahead and use all the parts of those beets the beets greens the beets themselves so we'll go ahead and just chop this up These don't need to be really cut up small. Again, what's gonna happen here is those bacteria are just gonna eat all of this plant material, break it down. So we'll go ahead and add the beet greens to, the, to this bag. We'll go ahead and chop up these beets a little bit smaller. I should probably go ahead and use some gloves so my hands don't get dyed red, but oh well, too late. So for these beets, I do want them to be a little bit smaller. They are thicker, harder. The more surface area the bacteria can work on, the faster it will break down, just like compost. So I'll go ahead and add up these chopped up beets into my bag here. I actually have some more beets here from our holiday party. What I'm actually gonna do is just use the greens and I'm gonna actually make a beet salad for my family with the remaining beets. I'm gonna chop this up. Now that we got the beets in our pillow bag here, what we're gonna actually do is go ahead and add our leftover unripened figs. So here we have our leftover figs, pretty disgusting. So I had this in the freezer bag. I went ahead and thawed it out. I left it out and it started to decompose on me. 
pretty nasty, but we're gonna go ahead and just add this to our mix here. We're just gonna man up and just scoop it in. Pretty disgusting. Again, my theory on adding these figs is our goal is just try to feed our future figs with more sugar. So again, what we're trying to do here is just use whatever we have remaining and kind of build this loop and gardening, right? Nothing goes to waste. Now that we got our plant material in our pillowcase here, we went ahead and tied it up. To really understand FPE, this process is anaerobic bacteria. So we're trying to keep air out of this container. I went ahead and got this special bucket with this lid that actually can seal in here. That took a little bit of muscle, but now that I got the lid sealed on, what's really nice again is this has a twist off so I can go ahead and open it. In this process, what's gonna happen is this bacteria, again, is gonna eat this plant material. It's gonna do some off-gassing. And what we wanna do is go ahead and burp this container, let out some of the air, uh, maybe a couple times in this process. We have our water. We went ahead and did the same process we did with our compost tea, and we went ahead and aerated it made sure to get all the chlorine out. And all I'm gonna do is just simply drop this bag into this mix. The rocks are really helping keeping it nice and submerged. All we have is our mesh bag with our plant material in this five gallon bucket. All right, so now that we got our plant material in our bucket, what we're gonna go ahead and do is add our labs again this is the beneficial bacteria in this container and then also part of the ferment is our molasses again the formula is one 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 hundred so one part of our labs one part molasses one part plant material to the 100 uh, ratio of water so we have our five gallon bucket here which roughly translates to about six ounces so we'll go ahead and measure six ounces of labs and six ounces of molasses our sugar source and add it to our container here. the ratio of plant material you can go ahead and be a little bit more aggressive with it the more plant material you have the more the bacteria will eat and anything that's left over again will be in the mesh bag we can go ahead and take that out and that's actually really great for top dressing our plants as well so how I do this is I'll go ahead and take my syringe. Again, it has the units of ounces. So I'll go ahead and put six ounces into this cup. And six. The ratio isn't really that important I mean, we can go over or under. What we're trying to do is, with, especially with the labs, it's not cheap. So again, we just don't want to go ahead and waste it for no reason. Once I have my six ounce mark, I'll go ahead and mark it with a Sharpie. And then I'll go ahead and know this is six ounce. Go ahead and just pour that back in there. What I'll do is I'll go ahead and put another cup in there just so I'm not contaminating my materials here. I'm gonna go ahead and take my labs. Again, my lactic acid bacterium serum. Give it a good shake. And then I'm gonna go ahead and fill this to the six ounce line. I'll give you guys a close up. I just went ahead and filled this up to the six ounce line. So it smells like apple cider, vinegar. Doesn't smell too bad. Again, what we'll go ahead and do is add this to our bucket here. And again, this is the bacteria that's gonna go ahead and eat all of our plant material. Now that we got our bacteria in there, what we wanna do is add a sugar source. And again, my choice of sugar source here is this molasses. And this molasses is gonna actually be uh, food for the bacteria to again, multiply. 
and I'm gonna go ahead and fill this up to the six ounce line. Again, we don't have to be super accurate. And then now I'll go ahead and add this to our container. Let me get my stick here. It's not exact science. All right guys, so as you can see, it's really super easy. The hardest part about this whole process is getting your labs. You can go ahead and get this lab at any hydroponic store or you can source it on Amazon. So now that I got the plant material, the labs, and the molasses in here, I'll just go ahead and give it a nice mix. Nothing too aggressive. And then what we'll do is we'll go ahead and seal this bucket up. And all we do is now we just wait. Now that we got our FPE made up, when can we use it? Well, unlike compost seed, which we can use within 12 hours, fermented plant extract actually does take time. There's a lot of factors that take place in this whole process. Uh, temperature being one of them. Again, what we're trying to do is get this anaerobic bacteria to break down this plant material and multiply. This process can take anywhere from one week all the way to three weeks. How do we know when our FPE is ready to be used? We actually have to wait until the pH drops below four and a great target range is between 3.5 and four. Again, we're using acid bacteria here. So when the pH drops to that range, we know our FPE is ready to be used. Unlike compost tea, where you can use it straight onto your plants, FPE actually needs to be diluted. That pH range is really dangerous for our plants. So if you can't wait until the next video where I use my FPE, what you really wanna do is one to four ounces per gallon. What I want to encourage you guys to do is stick around, hit that subscribe button, and just follow me on this journey as I keep going here. Now that we went to KISS school and learned about FPE, the benefits of FPE, and how to make FPE, I really hope this inspired you to give it a try. If anything, I hope you really learned something. When I learned about compost tea and FPE, FPE was a little bit confusing. I really hope that I made it as simple as possible for you guys to really understand what FPE is all about. I appreciate you guys joining me on this episode. Again, my name is Homer from Basement Figs, Elgin Noise Zone 5B. I'll catch you guys on the next video. Peace. Love you.